every day something dramatic happens in the Caribbean that affects our lives. We'll give you the details. We'll give you the facts on Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Fedrick. Here's Eddie Fedrick. So glad you can join us. Jamaica has a new administration following Thursday's general elections. This study takes the lead in our 935th edition of Caribbean Perspective for Friday, 4th September 2020. Details after this important message. The hurricane season is now upon us, so we as Caribbean people need to remember to think safety and be prepared. Avoid venturing outside during a storm or hurricane, especially if there are strong winds. Rooftops and other debris are often blown about and can cause great damage. Welcome back. The Jamaica Labour Party, the JLP, was returned to office in Thursday's general election with a landslide victory that People's National Party Vice President and campaign co-director Philip Paulwell described as shocking. With all the box counted at the end of the night, the JLP won 49 seats compared to the PNP's 14. The victory was also significant for a number of big PNP scalps taken by the JLP, among them Peter Bonton in Manchester Central, Wycombe McNeil in Westmoreland Western, Luther Buchanan in Westmoreland Eastern, and Fenton Ferguson in St. Thomas Eastern. We will endeavor to bring more details in our next edition. The JLP's 49 seats represent 57% of the votes cast while the PNP's 14 represent 42.8%. There will be no revisiting of the law with regard to families in private vehicles wearing masks and or face coverings. In fact, Trinidad's Attorney General Faris al rawi in response to questions at the Ministry of Health's virtual COVID-19 media conference said, charges for children eight years and over stand. More in this TV6 report with Elizabeth Williams. Attorney General Faris Alwari was adamant in light of the thriving pH industry, the revised public health ordinance treating with mask wearing in private vehicles will not change. We have to just simply exercise common sense and reasonableness. Let's allow the country to get back to work by just wearing your mask. So, no, we're not looking at revising this position. Minister Alwari said before the public health ordinance was issued, similar mask-wearing laws in countries such as Australia, New Zealand, Canada, the United Kingdom, and a few Caribbean states, namely Jamaica, Dominica, Barbados, and Anguilla, were looked at. And in all of these jurisdictions, children are treated with. And in some of these jurisdictions... There is no exception for children of any age at all. In some of the other jurisdictions, they start with an age limit. For instance, you look in Canada of two years old. He said the law is clear when treating with children if they are found guilty of breaking the law. If the child is in the company of an adult, that adult is a person with responsibility for the child. Anybody who has care and control, actual looking after the child at that moment in time, has care and responsibility for the child. That person is subjected to a $1,000 fine in the event that that person does not ensure that the child is wearing the mask, that the Children's Act works in conjunction with this law. Chapter 4601, this is the Children's Act number 12 of 2012, specifically provides in sections 56 and sections 57, what happens when a child is brought to the children's court. Meantime, on the issue of the resumption of schools virtually, Health Minister Terence D'Alsing is reminding parents and guardians to have their children vaccinated. I want to urge parents to please keep up the vaccination schedules of your children so that we don't add another epidemic of measles onto COVID. Let us be proactive. Please keep up your vaccination schedules. Elizabeth Williams, TV6 News. CCN's investigative journalist Dennis Wren 
scores a court victory against the Commission of Police in Trinidad and Tobago. Irva Shitawari Rupnarayan of TV6 News reports. Well, the court has instructed the Commission of Police to provide information to CCN investigative journalist Denise Wren under the Freedom of Information Act. The decision came from a judicial review done by Justice Ronnie Budusing following a Freedom of Information request from Denise Wren to the Commissioner of Police on the 3rd of October 2019. The court heard in respect of the request certain information was provided and in other cases the information was not provided and exemptions were claimed under certain sections of the Act. The judge has now compelled the Commissioner to answer all the questions that weren't answered to the satisfaction of the court. The top cop and the TTPS have to provide information by September 11th. Mr. Ramel Peters appeared for Ms. Wren, while Mr. Lester Charia and Mr. Safraz Al-Saran appeared for the Commissioner of Police. <music> You're listening to Caribbean Perspective with Eddie Frederick. Commission of Police Gary Griffith at the TTPS's weekly media briefing addressed several topics of public concern, one of which was his test scores in applying to be the Commission of Police, as well as the time the Police Service Commission is taking to select a Deputy Commission of Police and mask wearing by the homeless. TV6's Nicholas Lutchman Singh has more. The Commissioner of Police has come out defending his performance appraisal, showing that he topped all assessments and reassessments, stating in no uncertain terms that he did not get his position as Commissioner of Police due to the graces of the government. I still beat everybody coming and going. They decided to then say, let us throw all this away and have what is known as curry favor or pale favor. It certainly wasn't Gary favor. So what they said is ignore all the points, ignore all of the grades, ignore the millions of dollars spent by the taxpayers, and let us just put who we feel. And that is where they put Gary Griffith as foot. So it is not the government or parliament anyone did me a favor. I got the highest points of everyone who applied for commissioner of police. And it is there for fact. The commissioner also answered questions on the length of time the Police Service Commission is taking to select a deputy commissioner of police in December, as stated in a media release issued by the Police Service Commission, saying he couldn't question why, but thinks that raising the bar for deputy commissioners will lessen the applicants speeding up the time for selection. By it being a master's requirement now, I can't see more than about 10 to 15 persons actually applying. So hopefully this can be rectified before the end of this year. But I think it will be inappropriate for me to question or to challenge or to ask the PSC as to what is the deal. Day. This comes on the heels of the Police Complaints Authority's recommendation that the top cop set up a tribunal to investigate allegations against being second in rank only to the commissioner cannot be investigated by less senior officers. However, since there will be no Deputy Commissioner of Police selection until year's end, there can be no tribunal. But the Commissioner said had there been a criminal offence committed by Hackshaw, a tribunal would not have been needed. You see, had it been a criminal offence, you don't need to have a tribunal. It's a criminal offence. In other words, a constable could charge a, a police commissioner. Had it been a criminal offence, so had it been a situation pertaining to money laundering, financial impropriety, fraud, white collar crime, immediately it will trigger. But this is an internal disciplinary matter as to if it is he acquired permission to work whilst on vacation. Speaking on the topic of mandatory mask wearing and on concerns of the homeless not wearing masks, the commissioner said the TTPS will be giving out over 500 masks throughout various parts of the country. But for clinically insane persons who may not grasp the need to wear a mask, he had this to say. Given a homeless person a ticket, the first, the first thing is the person must have an address. <laughs> so I don't know where that is coming from. Right. And then likewise, if that person has the ability to pay. So rather than us go down the road of, of giving homeless persons tickets, what we are doing is to get persuasion as much as possible, especially in areas where they would fraternize and be involved with, with other civilians, especially, for example, downtown Port of Spain. So which is why we are doing this. As, so this is the first phase. The commissioner also said the TTPS will practice discretion when issuing tickets to children over eight years found not wearing a face mask, using persuasion and common sense. Nicholas Lutchman Singh, 
TV6 News. It is the view of three GCOM commissioners that Home Affairs Minister Robson Ben is in conflict with the law now that he is a sitting minister but is actively involved in the GCOM investigation. Travis Chase of HGP Nightly News reports. Three GCOM commissioners, Vincent Alexander, Charles Corbin, and Desmond Trotman, are up in arms over the reported involvement of former PPPC Commissioner, now Minister of Home Affairs, Robson Ben's involvement in the police's investigation into alleged electoral fraud. Evidence that the police is carrying out an investigation, there's no way in which it is the Minister of Home Affairs, who has political oversight of that uh, ministry, should be of the police force, should himself get involved in the actual investigation. And so for me, I do believe, like Commissioner Alexander does, like I'm quite sure Commissioner Corbyn does, is that what is happening here is a political witch hunting exercise, at the head of which is no one else than the Minister of um, Home Affairs himself. And we have to be concerned about what is happening what? here. GCOM Commissioner Desmond Trotman. Nightly News understands that on the 30th of August 2020, Enrique Liven, GCOM staff who is charged in relation to allegations of electoral fraud, participated in a confrontation with the Minister of Home Affairs, Robson Ben, at CID headquarters, where he was asked to respond to the Minister's version of events after the March 2 polls. I believe, now that he's Minister of Home Affairs, to get personally involved in that time. Because evidence that you juxtapose his behavior at the Commission against what is happening here, you realize that this is heavy political involvement that we have to be concerned about. We have to be concerned about what is happening here because Mr. Ben himself, as a commissioner, came to the commission with a number of names of persons who he felt should be dismissed. More, some of those persons today are, are, are being investigated. And Mr. Ben has now taken on the mantle of an investigator. Commissioner Vincent Alexander reminded of an incident which should have seen the former GCOM commissioner, Robson Ben, before the courts. Mr. Ben clearly assaulted a medical officer at the Recon Center. And absolutely no action has been taken against this man. And now he's the one overseeing security in this country. Another burning issue for the commissioners is the announcement by President Irfan Ali that a forensic probe would be conducted into the problems surrounding the March 2 regional and general elections that eventually led to him being declared winner. What do you make of the president's uh, uh, his, uh, take on setting up an investigative um, arm to, into this election? The government cannot, of its own accord, investigate GCOM. GCOM, the government, in that regard, is a partisan party to the elections and all that follows. And therefore, they cannot, as a government, at the level of the executive, seek to do it, take any action. The laws on these matters are rather clear, but are being used as people see fit. If one checks the laws in relation to GCOM, Article 163, what Blanham did, writing the, the chairman, asking for information, suggests that he's asking the chairman to breach the laws of Guyana. Travis Chase, HGP Nightly News. I am Eddie Frederick, wishing you a restful weekend. This has been Caribbean Perspective, a whole new approach to highlighting developments in the Caribbean. In the meantime, please continue to log on to CaribbeanPerspective.com for more daily news and more.